on me now? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Okay. You want a butt shot, a foot shot, a head shot? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't really think that through. <laughs> Hi, Dennis and Ann here once again, and we are going through our video reviews of boats that we are considering for our future boat. Uh, as you notice, we still have our little blue tape concealing from you, the rest of the world, the boat that we decided upon. So recently, we had an opportunity to get on a Fontaine Peugeot Helia 44 uh, catamaran. It's 2016. The name of the boat was Footloose. And what's the best part? It's used. That's right. <laughs> so. So yeah, that's right. So, someone else has worked right. out all Mike, the kinks. Well, I think Mike has owned it for about two years. So even the previous owner, I'm sure, worked out a lot of the kinks. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, every boat has its quirks, as did Footloose. But on the whole, it was. It was definitely a solid boat. Laura and Mike are the owners. Mike was on board along with Captain Dave from Annapolis. And the Fontaine Peugeot is similar in performance to the Nisna, kind of the middle of the road performance. So real solid performance. They have a four cabin layout, uh, but Footloose was actually the three cabin layout. They have a nice U-shaped galley, you know, which is easier to cook in rough, rougher seas, which we got to test out. All right, we're aboard Footloose, a 44 foot Fontaine Peugeot Helia. See the cabin, the galley, right here. It's nice. You know, you can brace yourself if you're underway. Got a stove top. Great lounge area over here. Windows. And you got windows up here, but they don't open. And you got a small hatch here for ventilation, so it faces back, and that will ventilate when you're cooking. Down on the port side, this is an owner's version, so on the port side you have two cabins, uh, here's your escape hatch, this is your forward cabin, nice bed. We went all the way down with Captain Dave to West Palm, Florida to meet the owner, Mike. On the starboard side, we have the owner's cabin. Forward is your full shower. It's ginormous. Lots of space. Again, storage, cabinets here. Show the washer. The washer is back here. Yeah, a couple things uh, we noticed that it did not have. It lacked handholds. More so there was nothing overhead. So it's nice, it's separate. Again, some, a little bit of storage. You got all the storage back here. The desk. And there's your owner's cabin, uh, berth, owner's berth. And when you look at the performance of sail area dis ratio versus dis displacement ratio, uh, it does. It puts it kind of right in the middle of the pack. We're making fantastic speed, but we do have the Gulf Stream pushing us along. It's really nice to be a vessel under sail. We've had the Gulf Stream on the way up, and it gives you up to five knots of a push. So that was really nice. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah. So our average for the entire trip, and this, uh, uh, Mike really likes to sail. We would go real slow speeds, but our average, even despite that, was six and a half knots for the entire time, yeah. which is a nice average. Yeah. It was like 750 miles thereabouts. Mm -hmm. But it was interesting yeah. too with the Gulf Stream. Uh, you could, one, really tell when you were in it, uh, not just because of the speed. Uh, you can see a little bit of the chop coming off the waves, off the water. But when we rounded uh, Virginia Beach area and got out of the Gulf Stream, kind of got back in behind land, you could tell the temperature change uh, and how much mm -hmm. w uh, colder it yeah. got once we left <laughs> the Gulf Stream. I mean, we were fine. 
Uh, the furler works fine, no issues at all there. Um, this storage here is mostly stuff we're not going to use. I got everything from dive gear to um, you name it down there. Um, oil change stuff, all, all kinds of stuff there. That one's not connected to any of the berths or anything like that going through. Uh, this is um, the, gen, the gen set is in here. This is the uh, parasail oh, nice. here, and that's nice. the hardware for it. This is also where, where, where we will store our fenders okay. when we're not using them. Um, pretty colors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the blue passion, I think they called it. Blue passion. I like your bean bags. Uh, water input is right there for our fresh water. We hold okay. 10 gallons. All right. And we're probably down to about 20 at this point. Now that's a fender. Yeah, that's <laughs> the one that doesn't fit in there right now because of the um, parasail. But, okay. Uh, hoses. Uh, we'll, um, we're not going to be obviously anchoring beyond once we get out of here, so we don't really need to go through the whole windlass and anchor thing. But uh, uh, we're always on a bridle. You know, you probably don't use bridles in there. Home. No. The bridle comes in, you take its uh, tank off and set it to the side and then bring the rest in. Okay. It tends to pile up down below. Yeah, see, so use like a boat hook to uh, yeah, kind of loosen I, it. I did reach down and push yeah. it off the pile. Okay. Uh, it's got uh, some of the survival gear in there. It's got the uh, uh, sea anchor parachute and it's also got the um, drogue in there. Oh, look, you have two bikes. Yeah, two bikes uh, creating little rust marks, but fortunately, as soon as I spray the stuff on it and water oh. hits it, it goes away. Step right here, but if you do use that step, um, make sure you put it away when you're done with it because the sheets like to grab it and, you know, that, mm. will, that will rip the thing right off. This uh, this here is part of your reefing, so it's all, everything's uh, like a soft, soft uh, shackle type reef. So. Helm. We've got one power winch, that one, and your, your jib sheets uh, here and here. Right. Usually use it to, to this one here. And this is your main sheet, so it will go to this one. Here are your reefing lines, so one, two, three. So just think of blue as blue water. That's, you know, the first one, right? Um, always keep these open when you're raising the sail and make sure that these reefing lines can run free because if not, you will. Yeah. And despite my bout of seasickness, <laughs> which we did not film, thankfully, <laughs> uh, you know, the sun sets, the sun rises, just the overall peacefulness, um, the rhythm you get into when you're doing a long passage um, is, is, it's like a meditation. Yeah. You know, you get in these rhythms, even though you're sailing around the clock and doing shift work. You get in these rhythms and, you know, you're like, oh, I'm going to nap now. Oh, okay, I'm going to get something to eat now. And you kind of just lose track of what day it is, what time it is, and you just kind of go with the flow. It's pretty yeah. amazing. You lose track. Sometimes you come out when it's not your shift. I know. I thought I was doing him a favor, letting him sleep, and I came out at 6 a.m. Because the previous day we were starting at 6 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. I come up and she's like, hey, sleepyhead. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Shift starts in like five minutes. You got to go. Yeah. And so Bertha did so, that damage to your... Yeah, Bertha, the beginning of Bertha, and the bag was starting to die anyway. It's like looking out of out glass. So, oily. Of course, it's dirty right now. You just kind of lift it over this stuff and then zip it in. No waviness. The enclosed helm was amazing, and we know we know our future boat is going to have an enclosed Oh, definitely. Absolutely. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Right. We can have the radar on on the main screen. In there. These are house batteries and then another set of house batteries back there. Okay. And then there's an independent start battery for each engine as well. Okay. You just leave the seawater intake open all the time? Yeah. Yeah, so the straps pop off, you tie the line to the cleat, and you throw it out there, and then it's all deploys. There's medical kits. Great 
code oh, flag yeah. set, which I have no idea how to use, yeah. but I'm sure it's cool. Well, cool as hell when you put it up. Run through the escape hatches, those top corners, you've already seen yours on your side. Okay, so your water and then your gas. What's your fuel tank size? Uh, 120. Okay. So tell me about the water maker, 15 gallons an hour? Yeah, so I auto run, so you hit auto run once here, it'll give you an hour. Each, each time you hit it, 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 it adds an hour. So let's say you want to go, you know, let, let's make 45 gallons, uh, let's make 60 gallons, that's four, basically four hours. So. And it'll automatically shut itself off. Yeah, and it'll back flush itself uh, as well. Nice. Yeah, and um, so this is not This is the life. Uh, the other thing we had an opportunity to do was some fishing and surprisingly all he had on his lure was just a little cork with a hook. We'd let it out 100, 150 feet and the first fish we caught was uh, about a 20 inch little toonie. Uh, uh, little tuna. Little tuna, yeah. All right, our first catch. Nice. We made like a little mixture with that for dinner. That was really good, kind of grilled it. And then the next fish we caught was a blackfin tuna, also about 20 inches. Fourth fish was the 42 inch mahi mahi. Made ceviche, we had fish tacos, we had grilled fish. Yeah, fish steaks. Fish steaks, yeah, oh my gosh, it was delicious. Oh, so good, yeah. so good. Yeah. Shrimp soup, shrimp stew, shrimp salad, shrimp and potatoes, shrimp burger, shrimp sandwich. That's, that's about it. So how far down do I go? Until you feel the, the bone. Okay, I guess I feel the it. What do I do? So then go follow that bone. You feel the, the spine. Follow that along. We live down here at the village. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm doing. And that belly's got spots. I bet that's it. That is, a little too neat. Over the side to the sharks. Fishy. And one of the coolest things, and we are definitely having this on our future boat, is a parasailer. Uh, it's the only way to sail downwind, and it's much safer because it has that venting. Mm -hmm. If you know, if you look at the winds and they're not too high at night, unlike a spinnaker, since it has that venting, you can leave it on overnight. And I think we sailed with it like three straight days Pretty much. how long well over an hour to get that thing set up the first time but at the the last time we brought it up it took us 10 minutes from beginning to end so i think we figured it out it and 10 minutes to get it up <laughs> it's okay baby i can wait for you <laughs> is that what you're saying <laughs> <laughs> like my face and tell me the two months of my life will I tell them I don't feel pain anymore. Mm -hmm. I try to be honest, say that I've learned. I try to be honest, I feel you with words. I try to be honest. I'll say it was worth it, but if I'm being honest, I still hurt.
Try to be honest, say that I've learned. I try to be honest, I feel you with words. I try to be honest, I'll say it was worth it. But if I'm being honest, I still hurt. So that was our opportunity to get on a boat. That's uh, something we hadn't considered before, and uh, who knows? Right? Something like that. Something. All right. Bye. Where do we look again? Over here. Okay. <laughs> All right. Dork. I yes. know. Good thing you love me. Yes. All right. So go ahead, just. All right.